Okay, okay Deborah, we are live on Get Set Up. I'm making you a host. Thank you. You can make me co host back. All right. Okay. I agree, Chef. How are you, Deb? I'm well. How are you, and how's your puppy? Well, I've got two little ones, and they don't feel great, and I'm going to the vet tomorrow. It's kind oh. of stressful because I worry about them so, but I have no, what can you do? And vets are so, okay, anyway, all I have to do is take one day at a time, Deb, and just yeah. hope for the best. I don't want them to suffer, but you know, you love your pets and there comes a time you, when you just say, I don't know if I can handle anything. Yeah. So that's why I love these classes because they're a great diversion for me. Yeah. It's a good I, I just talked to my granddaughter. She said, what are you doing, Graham? I said, I'm waiting for a couple of classes. The first one being yours, Deb. Oh, okay. I, well, good. I may be in a, are you doing another one today? I may be in two of your classes. I'm doing a great spring meals in 30 minutes at 530. So I think I'm in that class. Okay, good. I think I am. You have, your kitchen looks lovely. Oh, well, thank you so much. Thank you. It, it does. And I, I love it. Cleaned up from the last class we were doing. What was that? What was that the last? Was, that was peas. We were talking about peas. Oh, you know, doing the spotlight on seasonal ingredients and peas are spring. And so I used to make a delicious pea salad. I bet that's oh, it. it was. I haven't made, I think, yeah. Oh, it was okay. just delicious. Wonderful. I don't make much anymore, Deb. I keep everything, you know, I used to do all these fancy. Oh, I don't want to go past your opening. That's okay. Here we go. We are going to get started. So thanks, Grisha. It was nice to chat with you. And hi, Elizabeth. Hello, Jennifer. Hey there, Neela. Hello. <laughs> and Randy, hi. So, Arnita, hello. <laughs> nice to have you back. Hello. And I'm thinking, Randy, is this the first time you've been in one of my classes? No, I was at the cheese no. one, the cheese plate. Oh, okay. I had so many irons in the fire. Oh, I guess yeah. You were very busy in that one. <laughs> well, thanks for coming back. That yeah, was great. I really enjoyed it. Oh, good. Where, did you make a cheese board? Not yet, but I have lots <laughs> of pictures. Good. So, so I, it's, uh, it's on my list the next time I entertain. Me too. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, Jody. Hello, Wendy. Hi, I love seeing your kitchen. I feel like I'm there hanging out I with you. Too. I wish you were. <laughs> well, you are. You are hanging out with me. So let's get started because we're going to, uh, I'm going to show you what I do in this kitchen. Wow, you're seeing it kind of cleaned up. You should have seen it an hour ago. Everything was everywhere from the last class. So right now you should be seeing Spotlight on Seasonal Ingredients, asparagus. Is that right? Right. Yes. Okay, so I've done that correctly. And if there's anyone who's new to the Get Set Up or to my class especially, um, this is me. I'm Deb from uh, York, Pennsylvania. But I do think that most I meet 
I've met most of you now. Is there anyone here? I don't want to overlook anyone who's brand new or has, who hasn't been to any of my classes. So let me know. Yeah. Neela is brand new. Yeah. Neela, you're brand new. Are you brand new to get set up or just my classes? Just your classes. Okay. All right. Well, welcome. I'm so glad Thank you're you. here and I hope you will come back for more. Thank you. I'll try to do really well. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So let's get started. You are well familiar with this as veteran get set up people. You know that we really learn from each other. And I love these classes for that reason. We get a chance to interact and talk about our recipes and what we like. I do want to take a pause here uh, amidst all the things that you've heard before, just to say that we have had some a uh, little bit of trouble over the last few days. Some of you may or may not have been experiencing this. If you've attended a class, we have had some, uh, some troublemakers pop into classes and say nasty things and do crazy things and just disrupt the whole mess. So the whole class, so made a mess of things. And so uh, Get Set Up was all over that though. And we feel pretty good about some of the steps we've taken. So I just want to point out that Victor is here as our TA today. And Victor, hello, Victor, is going to be um, helping us out. He's going to vigilantly be watching the waiting room and also anything that goes on in the, in the class to make sure everything is, is good. But he knows that everyone here so far is, um, is a, is a, get set up regular. So we just want you to know we're do taking all the steps we can to make that go away. We are live streaming this class. So I want to welcome anybody who's out there on live stream. And I especially want to say, come here and register and be part of the group and part of the conversation, because not only do we get a chance to answer your questions and talk with one another, um, everybody who's registered for the class gets all the links to the recipes and the information that I share. So that's the best way to participate here at Get Set Up. Okay. And so here's our agenda for today. I wanna to talk about asparagus. Now my background, I love organic gardening and I've been into that for several years now, did some work with a nonprofit uh, farm organization. So really enjoyed the whole immersion into whole foods. I was raised on that and gardening with uh, raising organic crops. So when things come around in season, I think it's important to enjoy them when they're in season and to buy local and to, um, embrace our local economy that way. So today we're going to embrace asparagus and I have some fun facts to share with you about asparagus. I want to know about what you uh, enjoy uh, with asparagus, how you eat it. We're going to talk a little bit about the nutritional benefits of asparagus and they are considerable. And then I want to give you a little tour on a tour around the farm a little bit to show you how asparagus is grown and harvested you may or may not know about this. And then talk about cooking with asparagus. I have some recipes and some ideas. And again, I will share those with you after the class in an email. And I'm going to demonstrate an appetizer today that you might enjoy with asparagus. It's elegant, it is nice for serving to company and it's easy to make. So that's where we're going for today. So just wanna take a quick minute, just unmute yourself and tell me how you enjoy eating asparagus right now. What's your favorite recipe or way to eat it? Well, I've only just recently started eating it. Um, usually uh, I prepare with salmon. Do you roast it? I bet not, well, bake it, bake, bake it. it. Some, yeah, I put okay. it in the oven and bake it. And I, I put uh, a lot of different spices because I like spicy food. Uh huh. And uh, but I don't put any oil on it. Okay, so you dry roast it or dry bake it with the spices on. Okay. <laughs> well, sounds like a good way to enjoy it. I I roast mine with uh, asparagus, zucchini, um, tomatoes, and uh, whatever color peppers I have, like uh, red or yellow. And I drizzle it, I season it and drizzle it with uh, olive oil and roast it. 
Mm, sounds delicious. And you can change up the taste by changing up this, the herbs or the spices that you use. With yes. it and just yes. change, make a vegetable medley, whatever you happen to have. It sounds like sounds oh, delicious. That's how it started. That's how it started. I was cleaning out the refrigerator. Yes. <laughs> Lots of that. <laughs> Lots of happy, happy endings or experiments come out of uh, cleaning out the refrigerator. That's nice. I'm looking for recipe ideas, but I just recently tried it in the air fryer and that was pretty good. Okay. Oh, that would be awesome to try it in the air fryer. Yeah, good idea. I've um, uh, steamed mine and um, of course, bake it in the oven, but I like to put it in uh, quiches and uh, frittatas. Mm. Uh, I'm not just eating it with as a, you know, part of a main course, but I'd, I'd love to make um, asparagus soup. I know I've had that somewhere mm -hmm. before, but I think that was something I'd like to try. Yeah. As a matter of fact, I'm going to share a recipe for that today. I don't know how deeply we'll go into it. I'm not making it, but I will share one with you. So you have it. Okay. Anyone else want to share? Okay, so let's just talk about a few fun facts about asparagus. First of all, maybe not so fun. It takes three full years to get a full, a full harvest. So when you plant asparagus, if you plant asparagus, you have to be patient. You can't cut it even though there's spears coming up the first year. You need to let it go, let it be, wow. and let the plant grow. And there is an ingredient in asparagus. What happens to us, that odd thing that happens to us when we eat asparagus? <laughs> <laughs> we know, don't we? Yeah. <laughs> we have that we have that certain thing. Is it the, is it the we smell of the urine? Yes, we have stinky pee, right? Mm -hmm. And so that's that's because of a digestive okay. process that, that happens. And it's something called asparagus, asparagusic acid, asparagusic acid that is produced when we digest asparagus. And the interesting thing about this is that some people, maybe as many as 50% of people claim that they don't have that problem. But in fact, what they have is something called specific animosia, which, which means that they have a genetic predisposition to not be able to smell that. So it's not that they don't have it, it's that they can't smell it. <laughs> so I just thought you ought to know that. <laughs> uh, I also wanted to, to share with you that if you are trying to grow asparagus and uh, you want to really have it well weeded, Chickens are darn good asparagus farmers. Once your plants are established or the asparagus bed is established and it's pretty strong, chickens will get in there and scratch around and get rid of all the weeds around the asparagus, which is hard for us to do because it grows rather closely together. And of course we have to get down on our knees. So they're very good at going in there and getting rid, rid of the weeds, which the asparagus is thankful for because it doesn't tolerate weeds very well. And the top producer by far is China. It outproduces all of other countries by a long shot. So I thought that was an interesting little tidbit. And this last, this last little bit here, this quote is from Caesar Augustus. He would <laughs> say this phrase because back in the day, back in those days, he was someone who loved asparagus and it was considered a delicacy. It's still kind of considered a delicacy now. And he would, he would say faster, faster than it takes asparagus to cook, which meant in his way, get on with it, shake a leg, move it, something like that. So that was, that was something that was born out of those Roman days. Now, I mentioned that asparagus has considerable nutritional benefits. It really does. And it has been touted as fighting cancer, being a natural diuretic. So if you have issues with high blood pressure, this can help move, move fluids off your body. And it's also been shown to have an impact on neurological 
function. So it's a good brain food. If you look at this chart, you can see that the way this is set up, the highest amount of nutrient uh, vitamins and minerals are at the top. So it provides, you know, just five, five stalks, roughly 100 grams is 22 calories, very low calorie. And it has 42% of our daily requirement in vitamin K at 37%. And that's considered, by the way, by the, gov by the USDA as very high. Anything over 40% contributing to our daily uh, value is considered very high. Anything over 20%, I think it is, is considered high. So it's also got 37% of our B9 and copper, 18%. Um, so it's got a good amount of minerals as well. It's, uh, low, it's got two grams of fiber in five stalks. So that's not bad for a, for a vegetable. Vegetables don't necessarily have a high, a lot, high allotment of fiber in them. It's 92, almost 93% water. So have you ever eaten purple or white asparagus? We see green asparagus a lot. Have you ever eaten purple or white? No. No, no. no? So just to let you know a little bit about that, green and purple well, green and purple asparagus are two different cultivars. They're two different types of asparagus. And the ingredient in a purple asparagus that makes it purple is this anthocyanin, which is an antioxidant. And it's a powerful antioxidant that we should look to get into our diet. It's the, it's the ingredient, the phytonutrient that makes blueberries blue and other, other vegetables and fruits that are blue in color, uh, that color, that ingredient. Now, white asparagus is a whole different thing because it's not a different cultivar. It's grown differently. It's grown in the absence of sunlight. So that is why it is white. It is either buried or otherwise covered up. So this is what it looks like when you're growing asparagus. These are crowns. They're called crowns. You can grow asparagus by seeds, but mostly they're grown by crowns and they spread over time. They're grown in full sun in a trench, six to eight inches um, below the ground, the soil level, and they're, uh, they're a foot apart. If they're planted shallowly, they'll bear more quickly, but the th spears will be smaller and vice versa. So that's a little bit about growing asparagus. Has anybody ever grown asparagus? No? Okay, so these are the little buds that on top of the crown that become the asparagus spears. And that's why you let that grow and it spreads and these, and these runners, these roots grow and the plant grows and you end up with more and more spears each year. So you have to feed, go back, send the energy back into the plant. So asparagus is harvested in uh, just three or four weeks out of the season and usually in temperate areas from early to mid-June. Now, I think in California, there's a longer growing season perhaps for asparagus, a longer harvest season, but they are um, starting to just come into their peak around here, maybe, maybe actually getting finished. Um, and as I mentioned, year, th year three is when you can harvest the bulk of your uh, asparagus if you plant it. And it grows so fast. It can grow by several inches a day that you'll have to harvest it sometimes twice a day. So that's how, how fast it grows. You can use an asparagus knife or any kind of sharp knife and you cut it off at ground level. And you know when to stop when the, those stalks start to get spindly. I can always tell we're at the end of the season when I go shopping for asparagus, especially at my farm stand and I see those spindly looking asparagus stems and I think, oh no, another season over. So this is a little bit of what goes on with the white asparagus. So this is a chef and he's got a raised bed and he's showing you how he harvests his white spears. What he's done here is he's taken a two week period where he goes out, he sees the tips of the asparagus emerging and then he covers them up and he keeps going out and covering them up for a couple of weeks. And then he goes out and 
and unburies them and harvests them. Now, sometimes what will happen with a white, well, with white asparagus, it's a little more fibrous. So you have to peel it, but it is considered a real delicacy, especially, well, it's considered a delicacy. I saw some in the market today. I think it is, especially in, in Europe, um, prepared in high-end restaurants and served. You can see how he's taking care of that. And he's just going to blanch that in boiling water for a couple of minutes. Um, is there a difference in the taste of the, um, uh, you know, the purple and the white asparagus? I, I must have missed that. Yeah, not too much. You know, that's the interesting, the, the white asparagus people will swear by, you know, say that it is so different and tastes really good. The, the green asparagus may taste more green. Okay. There's a, there's more of a chlorophyll taste there to it. So I guess that would be the difference. The white may be a little a little different in that way. So let's talk about buying and storing asparagus. What's going, what's wrong with this picture? Can you see anything wrong with that? Well, I didn't think there was anything wrong because that's what I'm doing. <laughs> what, this? Well, I would say, I, yeah, I'm doing that. Yeah, that's what I'm doing. Okay. Uh, it, I would, they, they, they look dried up on the bottom. Yes, exactly. Yeah. These, are, these are dry. This is not the kind of asparagus you want to buy at the grocery store because it's mm -hmm. the water has gone out of this asparagus. When you see these lines, this asparagus is old, it's woody, it's not going to be tasty at all. So what you want is something that looks more like this. Smooth and firm and glossy. Now these are wet, but they, they, they will be like, a, have a sheen to them. When they start to get dull and have lines in them, they are beginning to dry out. And see how tightly closed those tops are. That's very important for uh, knowing that that asparagus is fresh. Now I have some in the refrigerator at this point that's been, you can see how it's starting to open up now. This isn't desirable. These have been in the refrigerator for long, much longer. So uh, normally I would just cut that off. Cut what off? The tip? No, that area at the bottom. This? I would yeah, just this is going all the way up the stem though. And you're oh. right. You're right. Because what you can do here to, is bend it at its breaking point and snap it off. The oh, other yeah. way, the other way to do this is with a knife and just by going down, down the stem until you hit the part where the knife actually sinks in. And then you want to cut off below that so that you're not cutting off too much. Sometimes when you snap, you snap and leave some of the good stuff on. So you can test it by, by using your knife that way. And just when you get where your knife almost goes through, that's where you want to cut it off. Can I so, just add one thing, Deb? Yeah. Yep. You, you make a very valid point, which I think is important about the closed tips. I'm the one at the grocery store that picks out and then I leave and then people are standing and waiting and I'm sure they're saying, what is that old lady doing? But I pick and choose every asparagus stock that I buy. I look at the tip, if it's not totally closed and I look at the bottom to see if it's set in water. Or yeah. sometimes, yeah, so that's a valid point and it's important and it makes a difference with the, you know, the end product. It does make a difference. And then it's important too, to look for how they're storing it. If they're storing it in upright in water, that's a good sign because it'll right. continue just like a flower to uptake water. If it's been laying there on the shelf and it's dry on the ends, uh, you're already behind the eight ball a little bit with preserving it. But when you get it home, Go ahead and put it in water. If you have freshly cut ends, you can put it right in the water. If you if they're dry, I would cut the very bottom off, just like you do with flowers, mm -hmm. and put them in the refrigerator in a jar with a little bit of water, and they will stay that way for a little while. Hey Deb. Yes. No, uh, no. Are you um 
What's your what's your opinion on the really, you know, almost all the asparagus I see anywhere are really skinny. Mm. And, you know, and, and they're tough. I, I got to tell you, they're tough. So, yeah. you know, I mean, what is your thought about the big the big fat ones versus the little skinny ones? Yeah, I think it depends I'm on. I'm sorry, did somebody say something? I ask? like the skinny ones. I, like I, the skinny? I won't get the fat ones. I like the skinny ones too. <laughs> you know, it's really funny. People are different in their tastes with that. And, and are, we're often raised to think that the skinniest is best. And I think it, it's really a matter of taste. It's a matter of how it's been, when it's been picked and how fresh it is also and what you're using it for. Because if you're using it for something where, a, you know, some things, a thicker stem is going to work better. I had a, a neighbor or my brother had a neighbor who grew the most delicious asparagus that he would get fresh and the thick stems were really thick. And it was the most tender, delicious asparagus ever. Very sweet, very tender. And so I moved away from what I thought, you know, I always thought skinny better, but not so. So don't um, discount the skinny asparagus or the fat asparagus and likewise the skinny asparagus. Just get fresh asparagus. So yeah, I, I always peel mine. I don't know if you do. I always peel the asparagus. You peel the whole stem? No, I wear those little, whatever they're called. Yeah, I, these, these. I, yes, yes. I, but I, I peel the whole thing, even if there's not one of those things, so that it looks uniform all the way around. Okay. So, so that's what, a you, what do you use to peel? Because see, that's, see, now you're talking about a lot of work. That's the whole purpose of why I, I picked the asparagus. Yeah, you know, I have never, until I came to, until I was talking with you all, I had never heard of anybody peeling asparagus, but that's really? just our area. You know, I come from a farm farm area. We didn't mess around with our food. We just were happy to have it and ate it. And, you know, we didn't peel it. So uh, you can, if you want, um, or you don't have to peel your asparagus. But Something what does you use different. to peel it? Well, I guess you would just use your carrot peeler. Oh, vegetable peeler? Yeah, a vegetable that. peeler. Oh, yeah. okay. Okay. So just like that. Can you see? Just, right. Yeah. So, yeah, I think that um, maybe what I should do is give that a try and see the difference. I might, I might like it, but then I might get more work to do. <laughs> it is more work, but, but it's, you don't have to cheat, you know, like it's not like you're chewing fiber. Yes. yes. You know, right. Some of it is so tough. Well, yeah. and again, I think that has a lot to do with the age of the asparagus. Yeah, so It might be that when I have older asparagus, if I have that, I might need to, to do that. But I've been lucky because I live very close where I can, to a market where I can get it the day it's been cut or whatever, the day after. So I rarely yeah. have that woodiness. So preparing and cooking, you, we do what you just talked, cut off or snap the woody bottoms or peel them. And you can blanch them for three or four minutes and then plunge them into cold water and now you have ready asparagus to eat in chilled salads throughout your week as well so that's exactly what i do deb exactly it's right. easy and it's take you know it's exactly blanch it and then put it in cold water yep and then when you have it in the refrigerator to use that way you stop the, the degradation of the enzymes taking the taste away at, which is what it does enzymes just immediately start working on any kind of produce once it's been harvested so this stops that degradation and then you can do anything with asparagus you can pan steam it in a little bit of water and that only takes three to five minutes you can grill it and that takes three or four minutes you just you can put it on a grill tray or they use these little skewers here and you put some oil on those and grill them half on one side, half on another, super easy. There are many stir fry recipes. And as you ha all have been saying, you can easily roast these. So let's look at some additional recipes. I wanna share this one with you because I love it. A uh, little bit of both here. You can, uh, has anybody ever done this? Wrapped their asparagus in prosciutto and baked it in the oven? You have. Yes. So, so what do you think, Jennifer, about that? 
Do you like it? Jennifer? Oh, I'm sorry, Elizabeth, I can't see. <laughs> uh, yes, I, I, I love the flavor that prosciutto gives the food. Yes, so you can put the prosciutto. So I guess what I wanna tell you about this is that use this as a suggestion and then combine it with a lot of different things that a lot of different tastes that you might like. So I'm going to change my, um, I'm going to stop my share and change my camera angle so you can get a better view of my mat here and see what I'm up to. Now this prosciutto, what is that? Okay, so prosciutto is an Italian kind of ham. Can you see it? It's very thinly sliced. You would find it in on a charcuterie tray, very thin. I don't it's eat very ham. salty. Hmm? I don't eat ham. Okay, eat so you might not like this then. You okay. might not, not want to have this, but if you did like ham, you could take, now I have a fat asparagus stem here and I can just have one in here. And I might want to cut this one off and use these ends. So I want it to look about like that. Little bit sticking out on the ends and just roll it. And the easiest thing is I lay this on a baking tray and I can bake it just like that. So I'm going to um, try another one. Here's another idea is to take one of these stems and I'm going to, I have some borson cheese left over from of all things um, that cheese uh, Randy, that cheese class. I had borson cheese on the on the cheese tray, so I should repurpose that, right? Because wow, I had a lot of cheese to eat after that class. So I'm just spreading a little bit of that on the prosciutto. You don't have to be too precise about it. And now I'm going to start and roll that up. Yep. Could you do that with cream cheese as well? Yep. You can absolutely. In fact, I would have done that, but I I used my you cream cheese yeah. in the other class. So, yep, you can do it with any kind of cheese. You could put a little bit of Dijon mustard in there if you wanted to. So that's the prosciutto idea. And you could use any kind of other um, salty ham product too. So if you don't like ham though, you can just do this phyllo dough idea. Now, how many of you have worked with phyllo dough? Well, I have many times, it's wonderful. It is great and it can sometimes be intimidating because it's these thin sheets, right? Randy, have you ever had any problem with working with your phyllo? Oh yeah, it breaks. Is it that does what break. They, is that what they use to make those uh, pastries, baklava? Yes. Okay. Yep. So very thin. And what you can see here is I'm unwrapping mine. Now what I had been doing with this, and I've had this piece. Let me, let me show you from the very beginning. So you buy, a, you buy phyllo in a box and it comes in two logs like this typically in a box. So they're about 13 or 11 by 13 or something like that when you roll the sheets out. And there's multiple very thin sheets stacked on top of one another. So if you don't mind, now that I've shown you this, I'm going to put it back in the freezer because it's starting to fall. Now it's very forgiving, you can refreeze phyllo, but what you can't do is let it get dry. So I've actually had this phyllo over several classes now, because what I do is I wrap it back up in paper here, in the paper or, or in a piece of wax paper, and then I fold it. And then this is a wet towel. So I fold all that together and put it in a bag and keep it in the refrigerator that way. So the way that we work with phyllo, and phyllo is very forgiving, even though it can tear. I'm gonna to try to get it over here in front, get the camera angle here, kind of hard. Let's see if I do it this way. So what I did with the stack, I'll hold this up. I took that stack and I cut it vertically in half so that it came out to be this way. And maybe you can see, can you see all those little thin layers? And they're, they're pretty pliable right now. They've stayed nicely damp. Do it this way. And, and that, that, that's a great idea to cut it. I never thought about that. 
Well, you do for this recipe. Now, when this tears, you could go, oh my God, it's tearing, I'm messing this all up. Or you could say, que sera, sera. And it's all going to be okay. And it will be because it's very forgiving and it's going to look great no matter what. So when it tears, it's still going to work. And now I have two sheets of it out here. And if they stuck together, I wouldn't feel badly at all about using um, two on top of each other would be fine for this appetizer. So this is actually the top of my other piece. So I'm just going to lay it over here. You see that? And now I have butter, melted butter here. And I am going to use my pastry brush and I'm going to butter this. I'm going to, going to do it crossways. I found if I went this way, it would drag my, my pastry up. So I do it across and I just dab, I don't drag. Just tap, tap, tap the butter across there. And I have to say, you know, I'm not a perfectionist on things. So if I can do this, you can do, do you this. have to use butter? Do I have to use butter? Do you want to use olive oil? You can. So you have to use some kind of oil. Um, it helps to cook the asparagus, yes. Okay. And it's flavorful. And it's such a little amount. And it helps crisp them up, brown them and crisp them up a little too. Ah. Speaking of crisping up, I need to put that oven on. Okay, so now I've got a little butter on there and now I'm going to take a little Parmesan cheese and just sprinkle it lightly all the way up and down the sheet. Oops. Let me keep my... This is the thing though, keep your dough covered when you're not working with it. That's the best, best uh, tip I can give you about that because it'll dry in a heartbeat. Okay. Yeah, do, you let, do you let it thaw first before you unroll it? Yes, thanks for that question. So what you wanna do with your phyllo is get it out of the freezer the night before and put oh. it in your refrigerator. Most definitely, that's more frustrating when you are in a hurry and I can be like that, like wait to the last minute. And if, if that's the case, then it's really frustrating because you end up tearing it because it's still frozen. Okay, so this is a really flaccid piece of asparagus. That's some of the old asparagus. So I'm going to use some of the newer. And I think I am just going to, since they're so large, I'm just going to use one, but if they were skinny asparagus, I would put two or three in there if they were thinner. But I think this one is really good. I do wanna tell you when they come out of the oven, you're going to wanna bite right into them. Please don't because they are hot. <laughs> and so you will burn your mouth. You wanna let them cool off a little bit and you can serve these at room temperature. I'm putting a little more butter on this now. And you see Deb, how asparagus is not a vegetable you would want to freeze, I would assume. You can blanch it and freeze it. You can't throw it. You can't just throw it into the freezer and expect it to taste good when you take it back out. You have to blanch it for a couple of minutes. And when you pull it out then to use it, it's going to be softer all to begin with. So you're, uh, you can try it, see if you like it, but the consistency, the texture of it isn't going to be the same. So there, that was a, not a very good looking piece of phyllo dough, but it all came together. And once it, once it bakes, it's actually going to look even better when it has all those little wrinkles in it and Deb, do you have a particular brand of phyllo that you prefer, or are they basically the same? I haven't. You know, I don't work with it all that much, um, Grisha, so I don't, I'm sure if I did, maybe I'd have something that I'd like best, best, but I haven't really noticed 
a different a diff uh, okay Thank does you. everybody else have one that they would suggest oh i'm sorry i meant to do this as well so the other thing is to sprinkle a little more a little more cheese on top because this gets like it gets nicely brown golden brown and it's just really tasty so what do you think Deb, is this your, is this your recipe or is this uh, uh, you know something that you uh, borrowed from somebody else? Oh, or? Yes, this is this is one that I found online. I I don't create my own recipes. I modify recipes, but uh, or use them as suggestions anyway. But this is definitely one that I I found um, somewhere. I might have actually gotten it out of a magazine because I think I have it in one of my saved recipe files hand files so um what i find on online it's funny when i'm looking for recipes is that there aren't too many unique recipes there's a lot of recycled recipes a lot of people who are posting on their websites and saying you know this is my recipe but it's the same as somebody else's recipe so i don't no. know if yeah, one of the things that I forgot, um, you didn't cover and I didn't ask. Uh -huh. um, usually I wash my asparagus. Yes. It, yes. Okay. And I did. Well, I, I pre washed that before the class. So I'm glad you brought that up. Yes, definitely wash it. But don't wash it until you're going to use it. And that's true of just about it. That's true of any produce, fruits, vegetables. Just don't wash them because moisture can really be a problem, a uh, 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 contributing factor to them spoiling faster. So that's the truth with, uh, with strawberries. Strawberries often go bad pretty quickly when they're in a moist environment. So keeping them dry is important. When you say wash them, is, is rinsing them um, and, you know, gently, um... Oh, you know, touching the tips. I mean, how, that's what I do, but I don't know if that's right. Yeah, just rinsing them, rinsing them and gently rinsing, rinsing them off. Asparagus generally is not uh, sprayed. So you don't have the pesticide residue really to worry about there. But what about the feces? The feces. I use, I use dishwasher liquid, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, well, if you want, yes, and you can do that or you can put vinegar in your water. Okay. Yep. If you have a place, if you're not sure, yeah, did that again. Now, yeah. Could you use uh, baking soda and water maybe to wash them? I mean, I, I've never done that, but has anybody? I don't know. Has anybody? Let's, let's, uh, you know what? You have me intrigued. I'm going to do a little research here. As soon as I get this folded up, I'm going to take a quick look online and see what they say about that. Because- And the only reason why I say that, Deb, is because I work for public health and we handle so many cases of uh, uh, um, E. coli, food poisoning, and yeah. shampoo. So- Yeah, exactly. It was attributed to the vegetables. I mean, you I know, not know. always meat. See, sometimes it's- What you're saying with that. Yeah, so let's- uh. And I'm imagining this is especially important when you're eating these things raw, right? Because most of this is destroyed when it is cooked at a high temperature. Okay, let's look. <laughs> uh, well i tried to put in the feces idea and it it just talked about asparagus pee so washing asparagus
salt water. I did find something yeah. on the internet. It says a simple rinse with water helps and sometimes a bit of vinegar and water in a bowl. Uh, and it says to use one half cup vinegar to one half gallon of water. So you're, you're right that you can use vinegar. Yeah, vinegar is definitely a disinfectant. So you can use that if you feel that you would be concerned. Yeah, yep. Okay, so what we're going to do with this now going to go ahead and put these in the oven and I'm going to check my recipe real quickly here for my time. Um, just FYI, I found about baking soda. It's not a disinfectant, but it's very effective in cleaning off pesticide. But I know that doesn't apply, but maybe it helps well, with good, yeah, it's good to other know. stuff. Yeah, and that's a good point to include when I am talking about vegetables. I need to do more with the washing. So thanks for bringing that one to my attention. All right, so we're going to tell Alexa to bake these for about 15 minutes. Alexa, set the timer for, well, 10 minutes. I'll pull them out of the oven before the end of the class. What temperature, Deb? 375, 375. Did you say you put it on a middle rack or bottom rack? Yes, I just put it in the, I put it on the, the middle rack of my oven. Which is where I put most things, unless the instructions specifically say, put it on the bottom or put it on the top. Usually they'll, they'll make a specification like that. So glad you asked that clarification though. So I don't wanna, I, I assume some things and I shouldn't assume anything. I so, watch a lot of cooking shows. <laughs> yes, yes. You watch uh, Food Network or? Um, I don't have cable, so I guess I pretty much watch PBS, but there's a lot of, uh, you know, cooking shows on, on non-cable shows, but I'd say, you know, Jacques Pepin and, uh, um, oh geez, I can't even think right now. Um, you know, Julia. Julia. Well, of course, Julia. I've been, I watched her as a child. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I just like um, watching, just seeing what people do. You know, because food gets boring <laughs> eating the same stuff. Yes, yes. We just need some ideas sometimes to perk up the Deb, menu rotation. Deb, do you get a channel called Create? Any I do of, not. Any, no. Oh, it's fabulous. Oh. Yes, that is. I do recommend that. I do get that. I do. Is that on? Yes. Fabulous. Okay, we'll check that one out. On cable? It's, uh, yes. Food, food Network, right? No, oh, no. no. No, no. No. Oh, you said Not, no, no. Create. Wow. Create is totally done. It's, it's, it's on channel. PBS. Oh, okay. okay. It's on PBS. PBS. Oh, it's on PBS. Yes. Okay. So here's the next recipe I wanna show you. I've got this one, pan steamed asparagus with shallots and herbs, which I'll send your way, but this is not a complicated recipe. I'm not, go not going to go into the detail of this right now. I will send it along, but this is the one that I want to talk about because I think it is a really nice way to dress up asparagus when you just wanna eat it kind of simply. You know, one of my favorite things is just to have fresh asparagus steamed with butter on it. And this is just the same thing with a little extra. So this is roasted asparagus with balsamic brown butter sauce. And I'll stop my share so I can talk to you. Maybe I'm not sharing. <laughs> I'm not sharing, am I? Okay, so what I'm doing here with the asparagus is Again, I'm going to just cut off the ends. I've done that with some of these, but I'm leaving them whole. I don't care that they're long because nobody's going to mind that where, where I live here. And I'm going to go ahead and roast all of this because it's time, it needs to be used. This is a really bad stem. It's all the way up toward the top. Mm. 
And I'll go back over these ends again, just to see whether there's anything salvageable. That one broke all the way at the top there. So you can see they've been in the refrigerator for a while. And here's one that the tip's beginning to open. It'll taste fine and roasted like this. It's good for that purpose because the flavoring on the butter sauce is going to be, be so tasty. So the, Jab, if, Jab, if the uh, step is closed, but it's sort of wet looking. Uh, um, yeah. Cut that off. <laughs> Cut that okay. off. That's rotting. That's starting to rot for sure. So yes, you know exactly what you mean. It get, gets wet and it gets, uh, it gets slimy. wet and it gets, uh, yeah, slimy. <laughs> yeah. So I'm going to use, this could be olive oil. It's I've used avocado oil here. I'm just putting that on. Uh, olive oil would be great. And I use my hands. They say, put it on the pan, sprinkle it, toss it around. I think there's nothing better than your hands. They're the best tool. And I have a baking pan around here somewhere that I put parchment paper on. And I'm just going to put this on the, parchment paper and I'm going to sprinkle just a little bit of salt and pepper on not much because there's saltiness in the butter now I'm not using salted butter I'm using unsalted butter but my soy sauce that I'll be using or my in this case my tam tamari sauce has some salt in it so I'm just going to use a little bit of salt. Do you always use parchment versus aluminum foil? Um, I tend, not always. Um, there are certain things I like aluminum foil for, like I'm making a sticky pan, a sticky chicken tonight for the next class, and I will use foil for that. But I do prefer, more from an environmental standpoint, I like the uh, parchment paper, and it does a good job too. And sometimes you can reuse it. So I'm just going to roast this. I'm not going to roast it while you're here, but I'm going to roast it. And then I'm going to um, melt this butter, a couple of tablespoons of butter on the stove here. And I'm going to mix in there the rest of the ingredients for the brown butter. I'm letting that butter get just golden brown, not, not brown, burn brown, just golden brown. So you really have to watch it. And, you got, and so I'm going to have to really keep an eye on this roll it around. But when I'm finished with uh, the browning of the butter, I'm going to pour in two teaspoons of, of this tamari sauce. You could use Bragg's amino acids if you wanted to, or you could use regular reduced sodium soy sauce, two teaspoons of that, and one teaspoon of balsamic vinegar. Now I have a balsamic vinegar that is a raspberry balsamic. You know, that's a happy thing too. I don't have to sit, go out to the store and buy regular balsamic. I'll just use my raspberry. It's going to taste delicious. And then- What if you don't like to use butter for um, health reasons? If you don't like to use butter, you probably wouldn't want to use this recipe then. You would, it would change things up. So you would, you would use, um, just roast it with the oil on it. You could toss it a little bit in the balsamic and the, um, the tamari if you wanted to, that would be fine as well. So that could work just as you know, nice. It's just, what happens here with this is that it gets a little bit thick and it coats it a little bit and that's why. Um, but think about this, that's two tablespoons of butter over that whole, um, let's see, it's two pounds of asparagus is what it calls for. And I know you're writing, you might be writing this down, but I'm also going to send you all these recipes, which is why I'm not being too specific about quantities and things right now, but it's, it's two tablespoons of asparagus spears and then, you know, two tablespoons of butter across all of that. So I know that butter, sometimes we've been really trained to trained to um, eliminate butter a lot, but butter is particularly useful for when we're eating vegetables that have been steamed because, or what, that have been cooked because many of the phytonutrients in vegetables are what we call fat soluble. They need to be 
they need to be accompanied by a fat in order to be well digested and absorbed. So butter is actually a, a not a bad choice in that case. You don't want to, uh, things swimming in butter, but a little butter taste uh, is probably going to be okay. Remember t less than 23 grams of saturated fat in your diet per day. So you have some latitude there. And uh, to, but, to use, but to use olive oil, so the, uh, didn't you use olive oil first? I did, I did put olive oil on the, to roast the asparagus, yes. So that, mm -hmm. that does the same thing as well. If you were just going to steam your, like I've eaten, oh, you'd steam, if I was steaming my vegetables, I would put butter on it, you know? I um, thought you used avocado oil. I did on this one, yes, I did. So interchangeably, I use those too. Avocado oil, you, you can use whatever you prefer. Avocado oil and olive oil both have very high levels of omega-3 fatty acids. They're both really good oils. So I might grab either one of them out of the, out of the cupboard. Avocado oil is a little lighter sometimes, especially compared to uh, extra virgin olive oil. So I just grabbed that. It also doesn't have the flavor, it's more neutral flavor than avocado. Interesting, oil. interesting. Yeah. I was, only, I was only thinking of it in reference to uh, the, the, uh, the young lady mentioned, uh, I think Carol, about the saturated fat. So yes. you have to include the oil that you use to coat it and the butter mixture. Is that correct? Yes, and but the saturated fat, there is very little saturated fat in, uh, in the avocado oils, just to give you a relative amount here. So <clears throat> in a tablespoon of butter, there are seven grams of saturated fat. Now think about that being spread over your entire two pounds of asparagus. It's very minimal. I just want you to feel uh, know the relative amounts here. Now my butter is getting, you know, it's not brown yet. It's melted and it's golden, but it's not brown. Around how many stalks are in a pound of asparagus? How many stalks? Wow, that's tough. It depends on how fat they are. Usually, how many? A uh, dozen maybe stalks. I would think maybe of the fat ones. Here, let's look and see what. So, you like do. at the first 12, stand, 12 to 15. It says 12 to 15 spheres. So, yeah. Is in a pound. In, about that, yes. Oh, okay. That's if they're measured a half to three quarter inch. So, yeah, 12 to 15. 15 on those skinnier ones. I'm just watching the letter and wanted to check one more thing. So, you know how much saturated fat is in a tablespoon of butter? And in avocado oil, there's 1.6 grams of saturated fat. Oh, wow. So that's not much of anything. Is that what you were oh wowing about? No, it's one tablespoon is 1.6. Right. Yeah. No, it's not. That's not bad. Not at all. Yeah. No. So see, I think we sometimes feel like, wow, we're getting a lot of fat when we use this, but Think about it being spread out all over and it's really just not that much. And then the other fats that are in the, in the uh, avocado oil are omega-3 fats. Remember, we right. need to get somewhere close to 35% right. of our calories in fat per day. So we need fat, don't eliminate it. You know, where we go wrong is when we have deep fried foods and, you know, right. things like that, that are, um, really full of that kind of fat. Yeah. Okay. So, yes, now we've got, um, we're coming to the end here. I'm going to share my screen and let you know that I will send you this, this recipe and the one for the pan steamed asparagus with shallots and butter or with shallots and herbs. Now I'm on the butter train there. And, Butter's getting brown. 
And that brings us to the conclusion of our class today. I will send you a few other recipes we didn't talk about. So I talked about an asparagus brie, cream of asparagus and brie soup. I'm going to send you that recipe. And there are a couple of other ones, something called absurdly addictive asparagus. I can't help myself. I couldn't eliminate any and I can only go over so many in a class, but I'll send them all to you. That's your benefit. They're all ones that I've tried and really like. So uh, send me what you think, send me your recipes. If you have some you would like to share, if you have any ideas, things that you would like to join me for to co-host, like, like Pamela did with me last week, she did a class on baking scones. That would be fun to do together. And tomorrow, Judith Willis is coming in and talking about her th three favorite chocolate desserts. So you might come and join us for that. If you want to do that, I would love to have you send me photos of your kitchen creations or any of these recipes that you may have tried. I have great spring meals at 5.30. Tomorrow we're talking strawberries and I'm doing something on DIY do-it-yourself spice blends on Friday or on Thursday, excuse me, along with Let's Talk Cooking and Food. What was so, the name of that channel that had the, uh, was great for uh, food? Create. I think create. Create. I'll put that okay. in here. I'll put that in the notes. You'll get the notes and all the recipe links. Or uh, I think I have a PDF on this one. So you might get some links and a PDF. And give Great. Me some feedback about the class and uh, go and check out the schedule. I do want to let you know that We've got a class called, let me see if I can find it here. This is coming up. By the way, I put a link to Create TV in the chat. Thank you. Oh, thank you very much for doing that. So I wanted to let you know that re uh, related topic here, my friend Scott, who's a guide here, is teaching a class on creating recipe cards with Canva. And that's tonight at seven o'clock. So if you have an interest in creating some recipe cards with your own photos, you might check that class out. And as always, we ask that you invite a friend when you join a class and uh, let them know about Get Set Up. Let any organizations in your community know that's how we grow. That's how we build our community. And if you want a session recording or you want to explore um, having an interest group of your own, or suggest a new class, get in touch with help at getsetup.io. And I want to thank you so much for coming today. I hope that the, these recipes were of interest to you. I yeah, want to thank you. Phone. Get the Philo out so I can see it real quick. Oh, Lordy. <laughs> thank you. Oh, thank you so much for saying that. Oh, okay. Oh, so they, need yeah. few, they need a few more minutes in yeah. the oven, but they yeah. are, um, yeah, they're delicious. Now I see that a little, little, um, a little oil might have, I can't tell if the oil has come off of the, I think it's come out of the, no, I think it's butter. I thought it might be coming out of the cheese a little bit, but no, because I never use the board. I'm going to try that one, the phyllo. These are so tasty. Yes, yes. Thank you. This was Boy, great. Enjoy. I, I, now I know Have what I'm, I'm going to go you, down and take the kid off the asparagus that I have leaning on the side, dry in the bag. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You are quite welcome. Thank you for coming. Thanks, Randy. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Hi, Jennifer. Thank you. Bye, Elizabeth.